All right, now I want to move across to the other big story of the day. No one can be forced to get vaccinated. The Supreme Court ordered today in a landmark decision on India's COVID vaccine policy. It also directed the central government to publish reports on the adverse effects of vaccinations. It said that restrictions that have been imposed on individuals and the public because of vaccine mandates cannot be called proportionate. It was uh, The court was referring to states that have made it uh, essential or compulsory for people to have a COVID shot in order to access public spaces. So the court saying with infection numbers are low, that uh, there should be no restrictions like this imposed on individuals in public spaces for public services and for public resources. The court also directed the center to publish reports on the adverse events of vaccines from people and doctors in a publicly accessible system. This was a petition filed by Jacob Pulliel. He's a former member of the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization. And this petition argued that states mandating vaccine, vaccines for accessing benefits, for accessing services, is a violation of a citizen's right. Therefore, it is unconstitutional. Remember, many states, uh, this petition also says that many states have made having a vaccine necessary for government employees, for travel in public transport, and for access to subsidized food grain. So the question right now is the Supreme Court order, is it upholding the individual's right against uh, forcible vaccination? Does the right of an individual take precedence over communities' health? Prashant Bhushan joining us now, an advocate in the Supreme Court who argued this case in court representing the petitioner, Dr. Puleal. Uh, Mr. Bhushan, first to you. Uh, I want to check, you haven't been vaccinated uh, till now yet, right? So you are the apt person to, uh, to fight this case? <laughs> yes, neither me nor Dr. Puleal have been vaccinated because uh, we both uh, stand and know that uh, healthy people have very little risk of any serious uh, problems due to COVID. Hmm. And uh, <clears throat> therefore, uh, in any case, the ch chances of our having a serious problem was very low. Secondly, at least I have had COVID myself. Therefore, my natural immunity from COVID is uh, superior to any vaccine-induced immunity. So therefore, I didn't want to get vaccinated because... Uh, the adverse effects of the vaccines are still unfolding. The long-term mm, okay. adverse effects are still unknown. So but that's I want to ask I you that, uh, the, the question of the debate. Uh, does this right of an individual take precedence over a community cell? Because experts say the more people are vaccinated, the, you know, the, the, the virus then dies out because it has no host body. No, the court has not held that uh, the right of an individual supersedes the right of a community. The court has only held, uh, which is in tune with the earlier judgments of the court in Common Cause and Aruna Shanbagh, hmm. that I have an absolute right to decide what medication I will take for my own health. However, if I pose a danger to other people in the community, yeah. then certainly vaccine mandates can be issued. Here the court has held, that we had submitted voluminous uh, uh, scientific evidence in terms of published papers in peer-reviewed journals, as well as the data from government sources showing that a vaccine does not really significantly affect your ability to get infected or your ability to spread the infection. Mm. So far as vaccinated versus unvaccinated people go, they are roughly equal in their ability to get infected and spread the infection. The only thing that the vaccine probably or possibly does is to prevent you from getting seriously severe. Case. severe illness. And that is an individual decision of an individual as to whether he wants to risk the vaccine to prevent severe illness for himself. Uh, what is the chance of his getting severely ill anyway? Mm. especially if he has already had the COVID infection. Mm. So therefore, these are things for an individual to decide. The, the government can only impose a mandate if and only if, uh, if you're the risk ability to, the public. to spread is far greater if you are unvaccinated, which is not the case according to the scientific studies which were presented and which were not successfully rebutted 
by the government. Not successfully rebutted by the government. I think that's crucial because we're not uh, arguing about, you know, whether maybe we, we'll have doctors on the show and we can put this across to them. But Mr. Bhushan, I want to ask you another very worrying aspect that came up in court today uh, was that the petition says that the clinical trial data of COVID vaccines has to be made public. The petition alleges that vaccines have been administered uh, that have not been adequately tested for safety or efficacy that, you know, uh, clinical trials haven't, I guess they've been hurried uh, because of the emergency use authorization and that data is not being disclosed to the public. That's quite worrying and uh, a serious charge. Yes, yes, it is very worrying because uh, unfortunately, though the trials were supposed to go on for three years, but in less than one year and only a few months, mm -hmm. They uh, terminated the trial, gave emergency okay. use approval and unblinded the placebos with the result that the trials were effectively over. Hmm. And still, they did not release the, uh, the uh, raw data of the trials. You see, the trials are in the control of these vaccine companies who have a vested interest. Now, unless they release the raw data showing ki what, what happened to those who were vaccinated, what happened to those who were given placebos, etc., mm. for independent scientists to uh, examine and analyze. Okay. Until then, we okay. don't know whether what these vaccine companies are saying okay. in terms of uh, test results are correct or not. There have been any number of cases of vaccine companies lying through their teeth. Even mm. Pfizer has been found to be lying about what their data revealed. And that is why the American courts have ordered Pfizer to release all their raw, raw data. Got it. By, of course, uh, all right. uh, uh, blanking out the names of the individuals so that privacy remains protected. But otherwise, the raw data needs to be accessible to independent scientists. Fair enough. Unfortunately, all right. in, this, in this case, the court has not really uh, ordered the release of the raw data hmm. in this case. Okay. But on the third aspect which okay. was the uh, adverse effects registry. Yeah. There, the court has said that you must allow, okay. because the individuals as well as private doctors cannot report adverse effect, uh, effects of the vaccine. Only the vaccinator, the person who administers the vaccine, can report that. So All the right. court said that uh, everybody should be able to report that, Fair enough. especially the individual who has been vaccinated, and that... Uh, that data should be put out on a public website. All right. Prashant Bhushan, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this uh, crucial day as you uh, fought this petition in court. I want to bring in some doctors because, of course, uh, there are doctors who've been working through this pandemic. They've been on the front line. How do you react to what do you take away from the Supreme Court directive? Uh, first of all, we have Dr. S.K. Sareen, Vice Chancellor of the ILBS, member of the National Task Force, also you know, appointed by the Supreme Court. And we have Dr. Shashank Joshi, member of the COVID-19 Task Force in, uh, in Maharashtra. Uh, do you think... Uh, Dr. Joshi, to you first, um, uh, you know, the center in court said that the petition was under national interest, that it is creating vaccine hesitancy. Does that worry you as a doctor who has worked on the front lines over the past um, two years? Sarah, uh, a couple of things we need to understand that there is a vaccine hesitancy in general. Hmm. And uh, Indian government had never made vaccines mandatory. They were always voluntary. Because this was EUA, this was work in progress. And if you see the way we handled Omicron, even the current wave, which is a very small cluster, which is happening, hospitalizations and deaths have clearly remarkably came, come down all over the world. And the primary reason this is happening is fundamentally because of the immunization as well as the natural infection. Mm. So it's a hybrid immunity which we have got. And vaccines have clearly played a role okay. in the outcomes of COVID over the last two years. So therefore, for severe disease, it clearly makes a difference. And vaccines are always voluntary. So individuals have that right. So that is an ethical issue. From a science perspective, right from smallpox to uh, polio uh, to COVID, okay. uh, we will always see that it will be a scientific endeavor. But these were all early generation vaccines. If you see even United States, Europe, they had the mRNA platform. Mm. We had a killed vaccine and an adenovector platform. But by and large, these were immune boosters. So they basically saved us from severe disease and death. And clearly for most of the people, most of the time, that is what public health stands for. They were reasonably effective. At least we can say All in right. the short term. And therefore, I think it is prudent that it is voluntary. 
But I think okay, prudent that it is voluntary, but this seems to be contradictory to what doctors have been saying on our shows, for example. Uh, Dr. Joshi, it sounds like the, the you know, Supreme Court is saying lift restrictions, right? The government should lift restrictions. We're seeing cases go up. Quickly, I, I'm out of time, but I want to ask you, how do you feel about this? Now uh, you have, uh, you know, the petitioner saying that if, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, you're equally at risk, and whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, you're equally risking others because you still spread. As a doctor, how do you feel? Closing argument to you. I don't think that is scientifically completely correct. Sorry, Dr. Sareen, let me just give, sorry, Mr. Dr. Joshi, can I get Dr. Sareen in? Yeah, uh, I think there is no doubt about the science part of it. And we have to accept it that vaccines are for prevention. Vaccine is actually a small part of the virus, which makes your body recognize it before the true large virus comes and infects and maybe makes a serious disease. So there is 100% science that we can't reinvent the wheel. And I think the hesitancy hmm. or any such doubt in the mind of vaccine efficacy should be totally dispelled. The chapter should close here that vaccines are useful. The second part for which I think there was a Supreme Court plea and Dr. Shashank has addressed it partly. <coughs> vaccines are voluntary. If you don't want to accept scientific data, a considered judgment of science and evidence-based science, it is your choice. Third, whether the public should be allowed to have such people moving around. You, know, you go to any U.S. university. Hmm. No U.S. university will allow you, your wards, your contractors, your faculty to work there if you are not vaccinated. And okay. maybe third dose. So if you allow all that, nobody goes to U.S. because it is accepted there. But in India, we have a debate. I don't think we should have a debate if the number of people who are infected goes into double digits. We are five, six percent. Suppose Delhi has unfortunately numbers of positive cases yep. going 10 percent. I All think right. we should allow people to be in the private places. We should have not only your own locking mechanism. And I think of that's what the Supreme Court has also said. If the numbers change, yes. then we will have to go back to the way we, we have to go back. All right. So vaccine, so everyone much, should have boosters. Everyone should have. Thank you so much, doctors, for giving us your time, your perspective. But, you know, I think what's most worrying, and I think you will agree with me, is the court said that neither the union government nor the states produced any material to counter the opinion raised in the petition. That is what's scary, I think. You have a petition making these arguments and nobody countered it. And so you have that order today. Thank you so much for joining us on Breaking News.